<clears throat> I have an announcement to make to the people of the world. Bitch! Watch this get zero views. Hold on tight to your simosi, because okay. I'm here to say The Sims 3 runs just fine. Ooh, it was Said no one ever, I know. Bruh. But honestly, it does for me. <laughs> Not everybody has that. Achieving a well-performing Sims 3 game took some effort. So in the spirit of giving, I want to share with you all the steps I've taken to make my game nice. I made it nice! This video is divided into three parts. First, we're going to talk about some basic fixes. Then I'll go over some essential mods to help with performance. And lastly, I'll talk about mods I use to yassify my game aesthetically. If you're new to The Sims 3, this game is basically abandoned where, I mean, it's still for sale, but there haven't been any updates for this game on PC since 2015. 84 years. And this means you can't just install it and expect everything to be hunky-dory. Who is hunky-dory? But now I can play on max settings for 15 generations in a mansion with little to no lag. And I want everyone out there to be able to do that too, if you can already. However, please do remember that your game's performance also depends on your computer's capabilities. So if you're playing on like a 20 year old Dell PC, I... I don't know if this is gonna help you. I'm not PC shaming, I just wanna be real. You have the audacity. Links will be listed in order in the description and let's go girls. I've cooked all day, I've decorated, I did it nice. And we're gonna start with the holy grail of Sims 3 Performance Canon, the Sims 3 Performance and Thank Bug Fix Guide. Uh, this is a guide that everyone who wishes to play The Sims 3 in this day and age, regardless if you play it on Steam, the EA app, Origin, your sugar daddy's NASA computer, whatever, you should follow this guide step by step. It'll be the first link in the description. And per this guide, the most crucial thing you can do to make your game run well is to make sure The Sims 3 is compatible with your graphics card. The Sims 3 does not recognize newer graphics cards. And this is bad news for you if you have a computer that was manufactured after 2014, because the game will be all, I don't know her. But luckily, there's an easy solution with The Sims 3 GPU add-on support tool. This tool will automatically add a list of GPUs to the game files to allow the game to sync with your computer's graphics card. The Sims 3 GPU add-on support tool will be link number two in the description. Next, this is extremely important. You need to limit the game's FPS. Limiting the game to use only your monitor's refresh rate should increase game performance drastically. This is because The Sims 3 does not have a built-in frame limiter. So if you don't limit the FPS yourself, you could end up with an FPS in the thousands and probably a melt PC as well. In order to do this, you need to go into your dedicated graphics card control panel. If you have an AMD, I got no clue where to go, but I'm sure you know. But for me, it's NVIDIA control panel, manage 3D settings, and then you want to use the ts3w.exe file. And don't ask me why, but you have to use the one with the W in it, or as my racist uncle would say, W. And then you will enter your monitor's refresh rate. My monitor's refresh rate is 144 hertz, but for years I've had the max frame rate for The Sims 3 set at 60 FPS. But regardless, the max frame rate should always be at or below your monitor's refresh rate. If you found that your PC is running really hot or like the fans are going ham while you're playing, I'd really recommend lowering the max frame rate for the game. As you can see in this little test video, my game will not go above 60 FPS because I've set the max frame rate in order to ensure optimal performance. So next, you need to allow the game to use more CPU, but this involves locating the graphics rules.srg file and then changing the numbers from 4321 to 4333. Honestly, I have no clue what this does. Bruh. Some guides like the one I've recommended say you should increase the amount of VRAM available for the game. I did implement this step. I do have mine set at 2048, which is like two gigs. But my understanding is that there is a limit on how much VRAM the game can actually use. So I'm not sure if setting this to anything higher than that number will improve your performance. Feel free though in the comments to let me know if you've done this and whether you've noticed any improvement.
So next, did you know that there's a ton of random pics clogging up your Sims 3 folders? And I ain't talking about all the feet pics you take of your Sims, you nasty. There's a folder called Featured Items. This is pretty much just completely useless. It's just pics for the Sims 3 store and permanently deleting the Featured Items folder and following all the steps to make sure it stays deleted can help with performance. This is labeled as number six in the description. And while we're on the topic of useless folders, the same can be said for the DC cache folder. It's a good idea to delete the files that accumulate in this folder on a regular basis. However, do not delete the one called CC Merged. Besides that one, you can give all the others the heave ho, and there's actually an easier way to do this that I'll get to in a few minutes. So with all the basic fixes out the way, let's move on to some mods that will help with performance. Um, ugly, never experienced that emotion. Only no millions have it. The first is the icon, the legend. She's got a point. Lazy Duchess Smooth Patch. This mod is essential at this point. I will say I didn't really notice a huge difference from before and after I installed this mod. So although what it does can be very subtle, it does help a lot, but it's definitely a must have. I think it's very essential. It's helped a lot of people out. The next mod is one that I cannot speak highly enough about. It's Regal Save Cleaner. This mod creates backups of your saves and deletes a lot of unnecessary necessary files such as the one I just mentioned the DC cache files so that you don't have to go in manually and do that it also does a ton of other things to reduce the size of your save files which will also help with preventing the dreaded error 12 messages which I've gotten and this mod has just saved me from so super grateful to regal save cleaner definitely a must-have for me so the next one is the no or fewer automatic memories mod you can also just disable memories altogether in the game options. Having memories enabled is completely useless, like there's not really any reason to have them enabled. And this mod will definitely help you manage those memories, like you don't need to have a memory every time your sim goes to the swimming pool. Another very helpful mod is the No Zombies at Full Moon mod. If you have Supernatural, it comes with the Lunar Cycle, and when the moon is full, the zombies come out, and before you know it, your game's like The Walking Dead, you got zombies eating your plants, eating your sims, all the things. I find those very annoying, and the more people you have on your lot, the more performance issues you'll have, so that's why this mod, I believe, is essential. And of course, the legendary Enros mods. I talked about zombies, and I also feel the same way about paparazzi. That's why having Enros register, which allows you to disable paparazzis in your entire town, I think is very useful. Enros Register Essential, Master Controller, Error Trap, Enros Saver, Overwatch. I noticed a lot of people who are new to The Sims 3 will just install all of the Enros mods. I don't think that's necessary. I would recommend being selective about which mods you install and maybe do it one or two at a time because sometimes a mod for whatever reason might just cause performance issues in your game. And a good example of that for me is Enros Story Progression. A lot of people believe you have to have this mod. I do not play with this mod. I've played combined like 20-25 generations without this mod. When I have installed it, it has caused a lot of lag like every few seconds. And the last thing I want to say that I've heard can be very useful in reducing load times, but for full transparency I have not done this myself is merging all of your CC. If you're experiencing super long load times, which to me would be anything longer than like 10 minutes, that's very excessive, then perhaps merging all your custom content will help. There is a program called S3PE that can be used to quickly and easily merge your custom content. I'll link a YouTube video down below to help out with that. But the ultimate goal of doing this is to reduce the file sizes, which in turn should improve your game's overall performance. So moving on to the final part of this video, the graphics mods. I'll do the best I can with what I got, got, got. Oh! Because if Sims 4 girlies taught me anything, it's that every sim must be an aesthetic baddie. Period. Dot. I get asked all the time, how does your game look so good? Well, here is your answer. 
First, I love this UI mod. It's just me as clean UI, highly recommend. I love it. I don't think the original blue is ugly, but now when I see the original blue UI, I'm like, that looks so dated. So yes, really recommend just me as clean UI. Onto the Sims themselves. I use burnt waffles, blueberry pie skin. It's really good, well-rounded, looks good on every body type. When I first started YouTube, I was using this other skin and like all the dudes had six pack abs <laughs> even if they had like a belly they had a six pack Bruh. and i was like hold up now you can't all have six packs where are the dad bots justice for dad bots and while we're at it justice for mom bots too i said what i said so blueberry skin definitely recommend next is realistic brows and beards i feel like this one really changed how my sims look you wouldn't think that it does but it really improves how they look it just makes the eyebrows have like realistic little hairs. Facial hair looks much more realistic. And lastly, there's another mod for the eyes by Burnt Waffles called Big Q Eyes. I really like these because they look more realistic. They add some dimension to the eyes. They look great. Uh, it's sort of like an overhaul of the normal eyes, so it does get passed down genetically. Like, I have a line of like four generations that have had these beautiful hazel eyes. Kelly Clarkson, she would be proud. Moving on to the environment, I think even without mods, The Sims 3's environmental design is so beautiful. They really did a great job. People say The Sims 3 is ugly and The Sims themselves might have some issues, but the environment looks amazing. But to enhance the environment, I use a lighting mod by Burnt Waffles. Again, the wonderful, the brilliant Burnt Waffles. It's called Fresh Cut Day 3.0 with Lucky Palms Water. With all the weather, it looks beautiful. The nighttime sky, stunning. Also, this lighting mod changes the sunset from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., which I honestly love as well. I used to use the Frozen lighting mod by Burnt Waffles. There's a ton if you want to look. Like, there's so many different lighting mods. The Frozen one was good, but it was just, like, too cartoony, like, perfect for me. But, um, I highly recommend Fresh Cut Day if you're looking for a new lighting mod. And while we're on the topic of lighting, some of you may know that with Sims 3 Supernatural, when there's a full moon, there's this this weird lighting effect that happens where like the bloom is increased and there's like a greenish tinge to the lighting. This is really annoying and I used to just disable the lunar cycle so that I wouldn't have this effect and I wouldn't have zombies but you lose some gameplay when you do that especially if you play with werewolves or some other supernaturals. But in order to avoid this annoying full moon lighting effect there's a mod by Pokétax that eliminates the full moon lighting both indoors and outdoors without any other effects on supernatural sims but folks that's it i will be doing a video soon on essential gameplay mods so stay tuned for that and oh yeah not that i recommend giving your money to ea but if you do want to buy the sims 3 legitimately it's on sale right now on steam if you're gonna buy it i definitely recommend getting it on steam Take that from someone who bought it on EA Play, formerly known as Origin. May she rest in peace. I had a few people ask about my specs, and at first I thought, that's a weird question, sort of personal, but since you want to know, I would say girth is around. Uh, just kidding, my PC specs are in the description. Bruh. I do have a gaming laptop. It's like two or three years old at this point. Definitely not anything amazing it was cheaper than a macbook pro i really like it though it works just fine this is an alienware but i used to have an msi gaming laptop it was also great but that was a thick boy one time i spent like a week just carrying it around in my backpack and my pecs looked amazing it was heavy also probably had like 20 viruses but it sort of makes you wonder like if computers could talk what would they even say? Like, he drops crumbs on me all the time, destroyed the trackpad. For some reason, the P key barely works anymore, but at least he cleans the screen like once every six months. I don't know. I don't know.